Underneath the state of Michigan is a bowl-shaped geological formation known as the Michigan Basin. Radiating outward from the near center of the state in the Lower Peninsula, it forms an asymmetrical series of circular geological patterns into the Greater Great Lakes region and into Canada. Formed over the course of a few hundred million years, it has been filled over time with multiple episodes of oceanic retreats and advances, depositing many layers of oceanic sediments and carbonates, which are responsible for many of the oil and gas natural resources deposits that we see today. These deposits trace back roughly 544 million years to the early Paleozoic era. Cambrian period sandstone deposits at the northern edge of the Upper Peninsula all the way to the near end of the Paleozoic era, at the onset of the early Jurassic period, with the youngest deposits as Jurassic red beds in the center of the state. Prior to the Paleozoic era, North America had begun to pull apart roughly one billion years ago to form the Mid-Continent Rift, an example of a failed rift system that did not end up splitting the North American continent in two, but left a large depression across Michigan as a result of many faults and fractures in the Earth's crust. While the mid-continent rift was forming, thinning of the crust and upwelling from the upper mantle allowed magma to penetrate to the surface of the planet at the bottom of the rift, where lava flows cooled and formed a thick, very dense basaltic basement rock across the region, which can be seen and measured by gravity anomaly maps over the state. Continuation of flows from this rift is also suspected to be of the same flows that form the Portage Lake lavas of the Keweenaw Peninsula and Isle Royale. After the Proterozoic, through the Paleozoic, up to the end of the Jurassic period, the Michigan Basin formed over a few hundred million years due to two main processes. The first being three large orogeny events, and the second being a series of advancements and retreats of many oceanic episodes. The three orogeny events were the Taconic orogeny in the New England area, the Acadian orogeny of the Northern Appalachia and New England, and the Alleghenian orogeny that formed the Appalachians. Each of these occurred east to northeast of the Michigan Basin and were responsible for forming the bowl-like shape of the basin. As the greater continental crust was pulled thinner due to extensional forces towards the direction of the orogenic events, the much denser basaltic basement rock at the bottom of the basin caused the entire region to sink deeper with each mountain building episode due to a property known as isostatic equilibrium. While the orogenies caused the bowl shape to form, the second main process of advancing and retreating oceans were what actually caused the basin to fill. Each time, advancement of ocean and river systems would erode and break down regional mountains and hills, which would get carried and transported by river systems to the low areas of the land building upon each layer of the period. Combine this with the gradual sinking of the basin, and this is why we observe greater thickness of layers within the middle of the basin, until we were eventually left with the many lithological features that we observe today. Starting with the Cambrian Age rocks at the bottom of the basin, these reach a maximum depth of somewhere around 15,000 feet below the surface under Midland, Michigan. Consisting of the Munising Group and Mount Simon Sandstone, these were the first rocks to fill the basin above the basement rock of the Archean and Proterozoic era, and to fill the deepest parts of the depression left from the Mid-Continent Rift. Outcrops of these formations are located in the North Upper Peninsula where they make contact with outcrops of ancient Michigan basement rock. The next in the sequence are Ordovician rocks, containing the Black River, Prairie du Chien, Trenton Group, and Cincinnati Shales, which cover a large strip across the Upper Peninsula and reach a maximum depth of around 11,000 feet. This layer is a heavily calcareous layer, composed of many thick carbonate and dolomitic sequences, containing some traces of ancient Michigan marine life. Following the Ordovician are the Niagara-Clinton and Bass Island formations, and the Salina Group of the Silurian period. These groups form one of the thickest parts of the Michigan Basin, reaching a maximum depth of around 8,000 feet with a layer thickness of around 4,000 feet at its thickest part, and are estimated to comprise up to one-third the total volume of the rock in the Michigan Basin. Outcrops of Silurian Age rock comprise the southern edge of the Upper Peninsula. Much of the evaporite and carbonate sequences in this layer show extensive ancient marine life presence, especially from many coral reef systems. Overlain by the next thickest group, the Devonian layer is composed of many sandstone, limestone, and shale layers that reach from the southern end of the upper peninsula and far edges of the lower peninsula, down to the middle areas of the lower peninsula. Also very rich in remnants of ancient marine life, the Traverse group from this period is responsible for the formation of Michigan's official state stone, the Petoskey Stone. Following the Devonian period is the Mississippian period layer, which contained the cold water shale, 
Marshall Sandstone, Bayport Limestone, and Michigan Formations. These formations compose the greater inner concentric formations of the state. The Mississippian period, being part of the Carboniferous period, was also known as a very wet period for the state, and contributed to the formation of many coal deposits that were once mined as a minor economic resource. Though in modern times, this layer is more important for gypsums, shales, and freshwater supply. With the basin nearly filled, we approach the Pennsylvanian period rock, which includes the Saginaw and Grand River formation, which although a very thin layer, comprise most of the bedrock of the central area of the state. Similar to the Mississippian period rock, these formations formed during the end of the Carboniferous period, leaving behind many carbonate layers and coal deposits at the surface today. Reaching the top of the basin, the last layer are the Jurassic period rock, or red beds, which are primarily found in the most central parts of the state and are dated as the youngest rock of the basin, composed primarily of sandstones and shales which have been oxidized, resulting in their red color though most of this layer is completely buried by much more recent glacial deposits. This layer is currently under debate as to whether or not the red oxidized rocks represented here and in this layer are actually representative of the Pennsylvanian period, as there has been little historical evidence to pinpoint rocks from this layer as actually belonging to the Jurassic period, and no actual outcrops of it exist at the surface. These layers from the Jurassic to the early Cambrian are what compose the many miles of rock beneath our feet in Michigan. Brought about by a series of oceanic advances and retreats, many of the formations and resources seen and utilized in Michigan are a result of many hundreds of millions of years of erosion and accumulation and burial of ancient marine life, resulting in a massive wealth and storage of natural resources such as gypsums, halite, salts, limestones, petroleum, and natural gas. Beyond just a wealth of resources, these formations have also shaped the landscape as we see it today and have resulted in many beautiful formations and rock hounding and fossil hounding opportunities across the state. If you are interested in learning more about what the formation of the Michigan Basin can offer you, check out our playlists on Michigan's natural resources, Michigan's geological tourism, or our shorts and videos on Michigan rock hounding.